So yesterday I had mentioned that, you know, Scout's birthday upcoming, you know, whatever, all the things because the rubber ducks. And I, you know, actually forgot to mention that in the whole, another reason why relaunching the site this week was a uh, weird timing because Zelda Glade Kidlet number two decided she wanted a high tea garden birthday party theme for her birthday this year. And that's a lot of work for decorating and baking and all of the things. And I tell you that today on this day, because this is her birthday. And this is that day that we are doing this high tea garden party. And it's amazing. And so, you know, everybody wish Soap and Clay Kidlet number two a happy birthday in the comments because she does come and read them. So that would be excellent. It would absolutely make her life. So yes, uh, what we are doing today absolutely has nothing to do with birthdays or tea cakes or decorating and uh, greenery and gardening, all the things, not, not, none of that. But you know, it's cool anyway, probably. I'm doing weird stuff with Mountain Pour. That's gonna be fun. And I'll tell you more about it in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 322 of 365 days of soap. And today is another nailed it challenge, but I am doing the entire thing in melt and pour, which is fun because we've done cold process with, you know, the soap dough and the regular pours of cold process. We've done bubble bars, which was a disaster. And I thought it would be fun to actually use all of that melt and pour that we made for all of the melt and pour recipe videos that we've done recently and try doing a nailed it challenge using strictly melt and pour. So that's going to be fun. Today's challenge is like Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. It's a nursery uh, theme for the nailed it thing. And yeah, that's fun and weird and a lot of moving parts with this because you have to make Humpty and you have to make the wall and you have to make the grant all the things. So let's get to the video and we can see how I manage this all with Strictly Melt and Pour. Okay, so first up, today is not Soap and Clay Kidlet number two's birthday. I recorded that face bit part yesterday when it was her birthday. And right after doing that, I was going to go and film this part and, you know, well, not film, but talk about the thing that I made. And then I decided to make the executive decision on the fly to move everything that I had been building and decorating and all of the things for the past 10 days uh, on the fly to another place in my yard that would be cooler for the party because it was like 95 degrees yesterday and I knew there was no, there was no way that it was going to be tenable at the time that I scheduled the party and you know, whatever. And I had 25 people coming to the house to have a high tea garden party and drink hot tea in 95 degree weather. And essentially I was, I put it all, I put them all in a place where the direct sun was beating down on the canopies that I had set up. And so it just wasn't gonna work. So anyway, I had to go move everything and therefore did not have time to do this yesterday. So if you wish Scout a, a happy birthday, do that anyway in the comments. But, you know, say happy belated birthday or, you know, whatever. Totally works. And, yeah, it was a good party. It was a really good party. Nobody uh, had heat exhaustion or anything. And they all actually wanted to drink hot tea. So that was good. And, you know, 
We had a lot of baking. It was a lot. It was a lot is a point. But anyway, yes, we are making a new Nailed It challenge with uh, all melt and pour. And that's going to be fun. Now, with this particular one, as I said, it's like Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. And so it's a cupcake on the bottom and then something else that he's sitting on that becomes the wall. And then, you know, Humpty himself. So I used an Easter egg for Humpty and just, you know, poked a hole in the bottom of it so I could pour into it. And then obviously a cupcake for the green part for the grass and a smaller cupcake for the white thing that I'll turn into a brick wall. And I will do that by peeling out all of these little individual things that from an embossing mat that actually is a brick. So that's cool and handy that I had that. If I didn't, I would have just poured out some melt and pour onto the table probably and cut it into little rectangular strips. It's probably what I would have done. And then just glue it on with more melt and pour. Now these are going to be made for the legs. This is just an ice cube mold in a weird shape. And it's about the right length for legs for Humpty. And I'm going to take these out when they're still relatively warm, the blue part, so I can roll it so it looks roundy like legs. This is my thinking. And yeah, as I said, for this, we are going to be taking the melt and pour that I've made here in two different colors of, you know, reddish brown and just using wet melt and pour to put everything on and make it stick. And it actually worked out really well, except that's not the best. I can't do that. Why are you trying to put your hand in that beaker? There you go. Look, use the right tool. There it is. But yeah, so the, the brick pattern itself actually ended up being really cute and fun. Very, very easy to do when it was all said and done. Again, once I figured out that I needed to stop dipping my whatever. Anyway, so with this, the reason why I wanted to do this with Melton Pour is, well, A, we've been doing a lot of cool process, but two, I had a lot of fun with the bubble bar with the over the rainbow thing. And I thought it could be fun to use Melton Pour and show you you know, how versatile melt and pour bases can be with something like this as well. That is regular melt and pour from the, the recipes that I've been giving you over the past, you know, month or so for a clear soap base that I am putting through the extruder. So I just cut a small piece and of the melt and pour that I had dyed green and let dry and popped it into the extruder and it comes out looking like, you know, grass or it will, you know, see when I put it on. Yeah, totally works. So you can use melt and pour in an extruder without any problems. And I guess if you think about that, it logically makes sense because clay, like modeling clay that you would typically use in an extruder is really quite thick and hard. It's very firm. So why not use melt and pour in the same manner? You totally can. So if you're not into making that soap dough thing, don't make that soap dough thing. You can use melt and pour. If you find that the melt and pour is having a tough time getting through the extruder, you can always add a little bit of glycerin to the melted melt and pour, color it, put it in the mold that you want, let it set up again so you can cut it down and put it into your extruder. And just the extra addition of glycerin, like maybe 10% of the total weight that you're melting down, the extra weight of the, or the extra little bit of the glycerin will make it more pliable so you can get it through your extruder easier. But I didn't do that with this guy and it, there was really wasn't any problems. And look, we got cute grass, not made out of soap dough, just made out of melt and pour. And that's cool. And those are my legs I was talking about. And this is basically the part where everything started kind of going sideways. I did get the egg out, no problem. Love that for me, love to see it. And I need to do two things. One, I need to give him some pants to match with the blue, you know, legs. And so I'm taking that same melt and pour in the same color and I'm pouring it into the bottom of the soap mold there. And I'm going to let it firm up for just a little bit, just long enough for it to develop a, a very light skin on the top that I can still kind of punch through and put the egg inside so it will all, you know, melt or firm up together. This is the part where it got really bad though, because I have to start carving a face. And you guys saw what happened the last time I did a face, nailed it challenge, and that was not good with the caveman. It was very, 
very silly looking and I didn't really want it to be silly looking with this one. So I thought maybe just carve it and call it a day. But then I decided I should maybe in these little, you know, carving marks, put some black mica into it and really make it more defined, which I feel like is a good idea, right? Wouldn't you do the same? I feel like you would do the same. I feel like that is a logical conclusion there. You know, I mean, I guess I probably could have just used melt and pour and made eyes that kind of stick out from the thing, but I wanted them sort of indented or whatever in this. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I think maybe that's because the brief was basically that. It was like a painted on thing. I guess I also could have painted it on. Melt and pour is a little bit harder to paint on though and have the lines sort of stay and not get washed away in the first wash. Granted, the black mica that I put into these lines will also get washed away in the first use, assuming these things are used, but we're not doing that for the Nailed It Challenge. But the actual carving there will stay. So you'll still get a, a face uh, of some sort. And yeah, that was my thinking. And um, that's when I decided to, and it didn't work. And I tried a whole bunch of tools there to try to get it in. It was obviously the bamboo boo skewer, which is my most favorite tool to use ever. But then also I tried the rubber end of one of the clay tools to see if that would work. I tried a really fine brush. I, I tried the metal end of one of the clay tools. None of it really worked. And so I just ended up making a bigger mess of the egg. Just the more I messed with it. See, there's the rubber end. Tried doing that with the, it didn't work. It was, it was not good, very bad. So his face looks real weird. But you know, let's see how I fare with this, the, the pants part of it and see how it all comes together despite the weird face. Okay, see, he looks a little bit silly, but, but his pants, they totally stayed. Isn't that amazing? I love that. It, it, it stayed, it worked. It did exactly what I wanted it to do with all of that. So then there was no molding of more dough and all the things to make that happen. And for this, I'm just going to take, you know, some melted down melt and pour and just pop him right on there, just like that. And then I'm gonna let him dry. And it's super cute. That actually worked out really well. So yeah, biggest takeaway with all this is if you want to make, you know, cool things with an extruder, you don't have to have soap dough. You can totally use melt and pour. But look, I did it. He's cute. His face looks weird, but he's pretty cute. Like I, overall, I think I did a good job. Maybe you didn't nail it, but a good job. I think this is so cute. I, I'm really proud of myself with all of this for sure. Um, it was not nearly as big of a pain as I thought it was going to be. And obviously I have the benefit of actually having things like, you know, an, an egg, mold because Easter eggs are a thing and you know, the cupcake and even the little bricks because I have a an embossing mat with that. So that definitely helped. Also something that helped was finding my extruders. So that was great, but also a fun tip for, you know, if you're wanting to do interesting things like with the grass, you can also use melt and pour with an extruder. If your melt and pour is a little bit too hard, you can melt it down, add a little bit of glycerin to it and then, you know, refirm it up before you put it into your extruder and it makes it wildly easier and it stays and it's great for sure. And sometimes in a lot of ways, it's a lot easier than using cold process uh, soap dough. So just keep that in mind for sure. I had fun with this one. It was super cute and I love it. And I think we are actually nearing the end of the Nailed It Challenge. We're going to give it a little bit of a break for a while, but we will be back at it for like the, the final two in maybe a week or so. But there's the latest in the Nailed It, you know, challenge thing, theme. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys had fun. I, again, had fun with this a lot, but I am going to actually go uh, have more fun with my family and, you know, 25 screaming, well, not screaming children, because it's a high tea garden party. There's no screaming. It's very well-mannered frivolity today. And I'm looking forward to that. So thank you, Sudzers, for being here with me for a little bit. I super appreciate it. I'm out of here because it's time to go have so much fun. And uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. But, you know, as I said, I'm out of here. I got to go. I uh, really appreciate you guys. I already said that too. 
my brain is fried, so I'm just going to end it. So hi, bye. Thank you for joining me. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Is that how we end this? Bye.